and I had my time of being angry and upset, and I still have moments of great sadness. But I know, I know better than to stay in that space of consciousness, right? Because where I dwell in consciousness is where I truly dwell. That's my come from. That's where I'm creating from. So I need to be conscious of my consciousness. Now I have somebody on the caller line. Hi, who's this? Hello, caller, are you there? I am, I am. Hi, who's this? This is Benton Hall. Benton Hall, glad you could finally make it. <laughs> it is my pleasure to be on here tonight. How are you doing, Siobhan? I'm doing. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I've been talking about many different things tonight. Um, You're talking you about let- martial law and the government having authority over people. And now that you've woken up. You're you're aware of your surroundings and that it's all voluntary, would you say? Yeah, it is. It is. Would, I'm just going to finish you, what I was saying before before I introduce you to our uh, listeners tonight. Um, go ahead and finish up. I'm at yeah. the post office, so do your thing, all right? <laughs> okay. But what I wanted to just finish up, guys, with was that I may still have those moments of sadness, um, but I but like I said, I know better than to dwell in that space of sadness or anger because then that's where I'm creating from. And so I, I'm i opting to be responsible for my energy and responsible for my thinking. So as the governor of my energies, I know that I must shift where I'm coming from and where I'm creating from, lest I create something from anger and upset and sadness, right? Because that's not what I'll get back. I'm not only a believer, but I'm a knower of that what I put out into the world comes back to me. I've experienced this in my life all the time. I see the manifestations of my thought regularly. So it's the same principles that apply to this situation that seems so huge and so big, applying those same principles to this to really create the most effective change and shift that we can. So without further ado, everybody, I want to introduce you to my very special guest, Benton Hall from Creditors and Commerce. We had a little glitch with the timing, but we're together now, and I'm very happy to have him on. Um, so welcome, Benton. Thank you for calling in. Oh, my pleasure. Now, would you agree with me that we have a perfect government, Siobhan? Well, when I when I look at it in the context of the government being a company, it is perfect for what it is. It has its goals. It has its project. Well, well, I I think I think the definition of perfect is whole or complete. Now, don't they have the republic side for the people who want to be in the republic and the democracy for those who want to run around in there too? They have it for both sides. The question is, is what side do you want to be on? Do you want to be under the democracy rule or do you want to be under the republican rule? But you will be governed. Either you will govern yourself or govern for you. It's one or the other. You can't just run around in, in commerce creating conflict. So you all will govern yourselves or you will be governed. It's one or the other. But my, I think this government's perfect. They give us everything we want. But some people are arguing, you know, they got martial law and this and that over you. Well, if if they enforce martial law, then you might as well all give up now anyway, right? So why don't you seek out an alternative way, like working with your brother, mm-hmm. trying to resolve the issue immediately rather than to argue facts and, and uh, dispute things. I'm here for one purpose, and that's the resolution of all things before me. You know, Siobhan, you were asking me what I think the definition of a creditor is and a debtor might be. Right. Well, a creditor is a one to whom an obligation is owed, and a debtor is one who owes an obligation. Now, in the sense that of the spiritual way, I would I would say that a creditor is one who seeks out to resolve everything before him or her. And a debtor is one who just wishes to feed off the public and wishes to feed off all those around them, like a uh, 
what is it, a rapacious molek, one who eats its own. Mm, like a, like a parasite. About... <laughs> like <laughs> right, exactly. Um, so we're we're doing some cool things. Um, Shivana, I know you, you were doing your court case thing, and we were going to go in and start asking for the charging instrument, and we've We've spun, we've delved into some new ideas on that. If you guys want to get into that, but what questions do you have for me tonight? Well, um, I just have some kind of ba- basic questions, and then I'd, I'd love us to free flow a little bit. But um, okay, well, thank you for defining, you know, technically creditor and debtor. Um, tell me, in your view, how how is it relevant to people? I don't think most people even know that they've been playing the role of debtor. And I don't know that most people know that they can switch their role and be the creditor of, the, of, of their life and the creditor in the situation. So how, does the, how do those roles apply to people? Like how are people debtors? You all have more personalities than Sybil could ever dream of. I've got Benton Hall license. I've got Benton Hall credit card. I've got Benton Hall notary. I've got Benton Hall that... Uh, has a has maybe a utility bill in his house. I've got Benton Hall that has phone bills in his name, maybe. The question is, is do I want to assume his identity in in a in a matter? Only I identify is defined as uh gosh, what is it? Uh only only you can identify yourself. Mm-hmm. When somebody says identify yourself, well, what are you going to identify as? Now you can either say, Well, I'm Benton Hall. I'm Benton Hall the notary, I'm Benton Hall the credit card, or I'm or I'm the Paramount Security Interest holder for Benton Hall, and what is it I can help you with exactly? The question is, is what identity do you want to assume? Now, whatever, it's kind of like uh, if somebody came up to you and said, are you Walmart? Well, I'm the authorized representative for Walmart. What can I do for you? Well, I just need to know if you're Walmart or not, and I'd like for you to show cause how I could be a dead corporate entity and what is it I can exactly help you with regarding Walmart. I'm here to help you. Mm-hmm. So there's an, for those who might not be familiar, there's a distinction then from your uh, name, let's say, and really at the core of it, we're all nameless, right? When we came onto the planet before somebody called us a name whether our parents or guardian or whoever, we didn't have a name. We didn't have a name, so it's impossible for us to be a name. Like, I can't be a set of words and sounds. I was was asked one time. Biologically, I can't be, (laughs) you know? Oh, it was funny. I was asked one time when I I had one of my police encounters with a helicopter and a few cop cars, and I delved into that story one of our Monday nights. They asked me, uh, where do you live? And I and I turned to them and I said, don't I live in the confines of my own skin? And the police officer kind of freaked out a little bit. He goes, no, that's impossible. You can't live in your skin. That doesn't make any sense. And he went, goes on this 30-second tangent. After about 30 seconds of him kind of talking to himself and freaking out, he goes, that makes sense. Mm. Wow. It was very interesting. Okay, so he got it. Yeah, name is just a person or thing by which it is known. They asked me my name, and I said, you know, there was one time when we had a stolen car at our house, and the cop goes, uh, what's your name? And I go, well, you can refer to me as Benton. He says, that's probably not even your real name. And I say, and? and like he goes, real Who? name, like what does, you know, what's real name? What's a fake name, real name? None of it's real. It's just, it's yeah, just when the judge, when the, the judge sometimes asks you, what's your true name? Well, how the frick should I know? What name right. do you want me to give? You can, right. Hey, you know what? You can refer to submit for my consideration. You may refer to me as Mr. Hall or Benton, and I'm here to do this, this, and this, whatever whatever you're there for. All right. So then, there, so there's so there's that clear distinction, folks, for you know the listeners that you're not your name. I know we've been trained to believe we are from little. Like when we were in the classroom, you know, they would call the name that's associated with you, and you'd probably you know, raise your hand and say, here, and, you know, identifying yourself as the name. We've been trained this way. So sometimes it's a little bit of a leap to come to terms with that. Well, hey, I'm not a name. And it can be freaky because then it's like, well, what am I? <laughs> which, is a, which is part of the, of the journey. 
the exploration of the self and discovering, well, what am I without the name that I thought I was? So that's where Benton's coming from, guys, is that, be, you know, the debtor is the name. And that's not you. So you, you're only the debtor when, when you agree to be. Right, I'm the debtor when I when I when I agree to be, and I might not even know I'm agreeing to be, and that's been the state for a lot of people. Like I didn't know prior to two years ago that that I had all sorts of contracts that I've agreed to, and that when I would argue performing on the contract, well then I'd have to pay up, or like this last time, you know, they threw me in jail a couple of times because What's I was money, on my contracts that I didn't know I that- had. Then that goes into what's money in our contracts dynamic. Well, yes, you know, they, if they are. If they want to get paid, well, why don't you bust out your ink pen and pay them, girl? If they accept it, then it's discharged. And under three da- UCC code three dash six zero three, if they don't accept it, it's a denial of tender of payment. So it's paid anyway. It's a very interesting one when you're dealing with some of these simple tickets. Mm-hmm. Traffic tickets and things, but you all have to be aware you're under contract, like like Siobhan was saying. You have previous contracts set into play, like your license. You could pay it off with private offset or your signature, but what's going to happen to your to your driver's license? Your permission to drive a car or a state vehicle can create a little bit of a flack for you, right? Well, can you take us a little bit in in this area of sorry, get my phone call, shut that up. Of the the spiritual implications of this. So in, we've defined debtor creditor very briefly went over sort of what that means at the technical. What do you think it means at the level of our spirituality? I know and I've watched some of Brandon Am Brandon Adams videos and listened to your father a bunch of times and and I get it, you know, it's like the creditor brings resolution, seeks peace with their fellow brother and sister of humanity because we truly are connected and we're all one. So when we bring argument um, to another, we're bringing argument to ourselves. We're creating controversy within our own self and what appears to be the other. <laughs> so in your view, what does it mean to be a creditor spiritually and what does it mean to be a debtor spiritually? Mm-hmm. Well, a, you know, a debtor spiritually isn't seeking out resolution for anything. They're only there to create a conflict or create harm with their brother. They're not resolving any of their situations they may have, mm-hmm. like uh, like credit card debts or mortgage debts. Now, a creditor, if they've got a if they've got a mortgage debt on their name, it doesn't mean that they're a debtor. They've got only they've merely got the obligation to pay it, but the bank has the obligation to keep their credit line going. So it's kind of an interesting one, you know, are is there really the difference? That's all interpretation. You know, how you interpret what a creditor is and what a debtor is, because I I can see them being one and the same. There's obligations on both sides to each other in every in every contractual relationship. And in, in every uh in every situation you have. So would the difference then be just very basic that one uh, seeks to bring peace, settlement, resolution, and the other seeks to argue, create conflict, and basically drag out resolution, like not you find could, resolution. You could say that, yeah. And, um, you know, somebody asks, you know, who who are you? Mm-hmm. You know, well, that's what's your capacity. And depending on what your capacity is, I could say I am that I am. You know, when Moses was asked at the burning bush, I think that's a, that's what it is. They said, uh, who shall I say sent you or sent you? Well, I am that I am. And you can tell them this person sent you. I, I can't remember the exact storyline of it. Well, and what what does that mean to you? I mean, I, I am that I am. I'm, it, to me, it, it seems pretty basic and core and original because, again, without labels, without words, we wouldn't be able to to identify ourselves with anything. You know, so, if I explain, if I make a statement, can I, you know, let me ask you, mm-hmm. Siobhan, can you prove you didn't kill President Lincoln? Can I prove that I didn't? 
yeah, I just want you to prove it. Can you do it? <laughs> I, I well, I mean, I wasn't alive at the time. Are you I sure? Think, <laughs> I don't think I was. I can I can just I can just really accept your offer on proof claim. I don't have a birth certificate right in, here in front of me showing that Siobhan was born in 1816, and I well, can just accept on proof of claim with modern medicine. Oh, I'll write it on a piece of paper, and that'll be your birth certificate. It's issued by me. And I'm proof of claim that modern medicine doesn't make her look young, Judge. Now what are you going to say? <laughs> okay, See, it's so a tough one. You can't, you can't prove anything. Okay. Proof is only, you know, evidence that's unrefuted. So unless somebody refutes it, it's... It's not proof. Un- yeah. It's, okay. you know, it can, it can get a little interesting. So you don't make statements of any kind. You know, I can't, if I say I'm Benton Hall, then I have to prove it. And I can't prove I'm a name. I can show a picture ID and I can get the other party to agree that I'm that name. But if they're not going to agree to it, how the hell am I supposed to prove it? So you can't prove you didn't kill President Lincoln. You can't, you can't prove you, you are Siobhan. Mm-hmm. So what are you supposed to do? I, that's that's where conditional acceptance comes in. I conditionally accept uh, whatever they're saying on proof of claim that I'm not here today is Benton Hall. Pro- they may say you're not Benton Hall. Prove it. Prove I'm not. Now I'm going to put the burden of proof on my other party, and they're going to have a whole hell of a problem with that. So that's where conditional acceptance comes in. Well, I've just started applying that. I, I, I did a little bit in my affidavits. I had a few conditional acceptances there in negative government form, but I just sent out my first letter ever <laughs> of notice of conditional acceptance. And, um, you know, it felt good writing it. It felt good to be addressing the situation instead of running from it. You know, like in the past, I would just really ignore stuff. Like I didn't want to deal with it. You know, something would come, a ticket, and I'd be like, ah, screw this. You know, I was in the more in the mentality like, well, it's BS anyway, and, you know, arguing, 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 that mentality of arguing. And um, now it, it feels different to be approaching the situation from not arguing but conditionally accepting their offers, you know, to, to forfeit $12,000 in bail on proof of claim of, you know, like eight things that I have them in default over already. So, well, hold on. If some, if they were trying to bond you out or if you needed to get bonded out, you know, this is this has gotten a couple of our people. Judge, is my word not my bond? Have I not shown up to every court hearing that's been required for the defendant? And I, I'm giving you my word that I'll be showing up for every future hearing regarding this matter until said matter is resolved. My word is my bond, and if I say I'm going to be here, I'll be here. But go on, Siobhan. Okay. No, yeah, I I was just saying that um, it, it feels good to be coming from a different space and not running, not hiding from the issues with the court, you know, and tickets and things like that, but to just really turn around and face it and deal with it in a way trying to seek resolution. So... I just want you know you, you know what you guys teach. I, mean, I know you know this already, but it's really been amazing. Like for myself, and I've grown just from watching and learning from a lot of the material you guys put out and and trying things. You know, so so that was so 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 that's really pretty much where I wanted to go with that. You know, when I asked you spiritually, what is a debtor and what is a creditor? It's really just like coming from two different mindsets two different heart sets. We were talking earlier in the show, I was talking about the mind and the heart, and I was citing some research from the Heart Math Institute, which has discovered just some fabulous, amazing information about our heart and how its energy field, you know, it's like 5,000 times greater in amplitude than the brain's electromagnetic energy field and how the heart has about 40,000 neurons of its own. And is nicknamed like the little brain. So I feel the difference between creditor debtor is basically, you know, coming from a more maybe heart centered um space than just intellectual mind because the heart without the mind, if we're not engaging the heart's intelligence and we're all mind, that can get us into trouble sometimes. Certainly got me me into trouble in my life. 
the more I engage my heart consciousness with my mind, um, the less argumentative I want to be, the more I want to be resolving. So I think a creditor is also one, like a real creditor, you know, who lives that way, is one who does sort of engage their heart more. What do you think about that? I'd have to 100% agree. Everything is from, the come from is everything. Where your heart is in a situation, are you are you there trying to hurt somebody? Are you there trying to resolve it right there and then? Are you trying to help your brother? You know, mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, some people don't agree you should charge your brother. Well, sometimes your brother may need to get charged to learn a lesson. Right. You know, if a, a police officer damages my party, now I'm not into leaning people up but I surely will give him notice that I do have that that capacity and I do have the knowledge to do it. Are you sure you don't are you sure you want to be liable for an X amount of dollar fine for assaulting my person with for assault and even battery? Are you sure? Mm-hmm. Are you sure I can't garnish your paychecks in your house and any assets or derivatives that you have in your name? Cost many a man life or fortune for what he was not sure of. Now, I may only want to do that, may lean him up, but then I may give everything back to him. Mm -hmm. Just to teach him a lesson. Look, brother, you're out rousting the cattle up. What do you think is going to happen when you're roused enough of them up? Now, people do not go against this government with guns or anything else. I'm telling you, they got jet fighters uh, and satellites and all sorts of crazy things we've never even heard of. You battleships. I mean, even thinking about going up against them with weapons, forget about it. Throw that out of your mindset. It ain't happening. You beat them in a knife fight, they're going to come back with two guys with a couple guns. You beat them in a gun fight, they're going to come back with a SWAT team and a few other things. You beat them that, they may bring the army. Don't even try it. It ain't, it ain't even going to be in your mindset that you're going to win. Now, Paperwork-wise, and a few things, well, that's a little bit of a different story. I surely think you can beat them because you are the sovereign. You are the authority. I had a couple things written down that I'm not in front of, but the, the Declaration of Independence. All men are created equal. What does that really mean? We have unalienable rights that were given to us by our creator. It's very interesting. They took an oath of office to protect the Constitution. You know, a lot of your constitutional rights, they're right there. Fourth Amendment Constitution to be safe and secure in your person. But from unreasonable searches and seizures. It can get very interesting. Mm-hmm. So much, what else do we have? So on? much comes to mind, you know. There's, <laughs> there's just talk about this stuff for hours. Um, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Just really I, would, I would like to give notice, though. Uh, if you all know Brandon Adams, Jack Smith, and Gordon Hall, and you like their teaching, they will be doing a seminar in Scottsdale, Arizona, on August 24th, 25th, and 26th of this month. So I did hear that. that. I, did, I did want to go. <laughs> if you can go, people, I would. I would go. I'm not able to make it, but... It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to change things up for this seminar. Um, some mock trials and things are going to get a little interesting. Where we where we play roll out, if you didn't know that, and we, we, we're going to give examples. And it's going to be on how to resolve uh, debts, whether it be a mortgage debt, a credit card debt, a freaking criminal debt. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's all the same. It's all just a debt, and it has to be resolved. The question is, is how do you go about it in what situation? And the more important thing you all have to remember is contracts are dynamic. They move every day, everywhere. The famous quote by Justice Michael Masmano, even the most ironclad contracts can be cut into by the acetylene torch of parole modification. And parole can be speech or writing. So cut into by by speech or writing. The most ironclad contract, I don't care what kind of contract you have on my person, 
or you have on somebody else, it can be moved. And that's where we come in. How to hold your contract. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Very, very interesting. Definitely. And and holding one's contract requires like some balls, right, to begin with, because we're all a lot of us, you know, are kind of scared at first and I'm I'm still working through my fears, you know. <laughs> I've already <laughs> I've already felt like I worked through a lot and there's like there's still more. But um I feel like that's very critical. To be able to hold a contract, one has to not really uh, engage the fear, but in, engage their their own like personal power and really, really stand in that. What do you? For you well, just from your own experience, and I know I gave you this question earlier when we were talking on Facebook, but um, I'm curious to know what your, like, mental barriers have been, if there have been any, what was the biggest leap for you um, in your journey of understanding these things and exercising your authority over your life in a situation with police or in a situation with a judge or a court or some debt collector? What's the biggest mental leap you found required to make this transition? Come from it's the number one thing is the number one thing when you're dealing with officers, judges, or anyone else because they do st they do have power and they can create a lot of flat and problems for you. doesn't mean you can't defeat them, but that's not what you're there to do is create problems. So I'm telling you, it's the come from and people practice continually. Say the, whatever you're preparing for or even your, your – uh, it's not a certain situation – you have to repeat over and over and over ahead. Write it down on a on a letter. Because when you're in that situation, it's like uh, if any of you have ever been skydiving, I went this last weekend and it was a very interesting experience. I'm kind of a near-death one, but that's okay. Uh, uh, oh, my God. <laughs> you are at hyper-speed mode. The most simplest task becomes difficult. I'm looking at my altimeter and trying to do things and I'm flipping around in the air and my most simplest task, my basics went right out the window when I got in that situation because I didn't practice enough. Now in some other situations, like I had a meeting with an FBI agent and a detective a couple weeks ago and I, I go into a month on uh, Gordon Hall's Monday night if you all don't know how to get to that, I'll give my phone number and email out and you can get to that uh, after this call. Okay. I, went, I delved into how I had that meeting, and it was uh, regarding some paperwork I may or may have no, have not notarized and whether I knew this guy. And they also asked me if I'm a sovereign citizen. They had a few questions for me. But in the beginning, I, I tell it, as that started out, I, my mind went blank. Now, I do this all day long, people. I practice every day. I, I'm, I'm helping people practice. Uh you know, I'm putting things together, and I'm writing them down over and over and over again. My mind went blank, and I said, oh, shit, to myself. <laughs> oh, totally like, literally. That. Yeah. But as soon as they opened their mouths, my my body just reacted. My subconscious took over and just started throwing things back. Wow. It was, I was quite amazed at it. I wasn't thinking about it at the time, but... As I'm, you know, as I went back and reviewed the reviewed what happened, it was it was quite amazing of what was coming out because I I had a nice answer for it. They kept, uh, you know, at one point they they like I said they asked me if I was a sovereign citizen. And I said, well, do you know what that is? And she she goes, mm hmm. And I go, I conditionally accept your offer on proof claim I wasn't merely a third party witness in that matter. And da 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 da. So I asked her. She knew what it was. So obviously she knew it was an oxymoron, I would suppose. Then she goes, she kind of giggles and laughs and says, okay, are you a sovereign citizen? And I go, isn't that an oxymoron? Sovereign being the authority. Sovereign, isn't the sovereign the authority? Isn't okay. a citizen under one's authority? Mm -hmm. And where's the paperwork you keep talking about? And what's the problem with it? Where is it? What's the defect in it? So I go into that on the Monday night. You all might enjoy that one. It was a 
very, very interesting one I had with them. And they were very professional, and um, I, I appreciate them coming out and giving Benton Hall a nice little test to see whether he's <laughs> break, break weak or not. Right, because you got to keep sharp, so make it tested every now and then. <laughs> practice, people. Practice in the mirror. Practice with your friends. Teaching people is going to be your greatest asset. Because as you teach people, they're going to ask you questions like, well, what is A for V, and why does your signature work like that? And then you're going to go back to yourself and say, wow, that's an interesting question. Why does it work? Well, first of all, I stuck a contract with it, and under HCR 192, uh, my my signature is set off, and that goes into it a little bit, where they took away all legal titles and a few history things. But, again, what's money? It's just an exchanging instrument. So if I exchange my signature for a line of credit, where did they give me anything of substance in the first place? Right. So I can discharge the debt. It's kind of interesting. Your loan is approved for your home. Did they give you a home or did they give you a line of credit for your home? So how well, are they? It's my understanding that, they, that the, the signature is what creates the credit. So they're not lending you anything to begin with because they don't have it to begin with because your credit creates it and they don't lend from their reserves. They fractionalize right, you, the money. But you created an obligation to, to start paying in Fed notes. Right. And that's where you have to reverse the obligation by way of a private administrative process. And that's okay. what we del- we're going to delve into in the August 24th, 25th, and 26th seminar. How to resolve that by way of a private administrative record and more importantly, how to enforce that. Mm-hmm. Sounds very exciting. And it is exciting to know that we are the creditors of we are the creditors of the money. We we create it with, with our signature. We're the source of the production, we're the life energy, you know, that creates things. So it's exciting to know that we can assume that sort of birthright and and be that instead of always being feeling under this mountain of debt that one can never get out of. That's not true. You know, because there is no money, so we can just, like you say, set off and settle the debt. And I just wanted to point something interesting out that you said when you were sharing your experience with us. And you said when when the mind went blank for that moment or a few seconds, you something took over, like subconscious, your your body, every, you just knew what to do. And I just want to say that that is a result of. Well, I believe that that's a result of the practice you're talking about because as we take on a new way of being and thinking, like like I was talking about earlier in the first hour, this ties into epigenetics, that we have, we have control above the genes. Like that's another false paradigm is that we're victims of our genetics. That's not true. We now know, right, because the truth is relative. It's getting deeper um, every time you look further in. But we know that our thoughts, our emotions, nutrition, stress, all of these factors constantly program our DNA. We're constantly modifying, reprogramming the information written in our, in our DNA, in our genetic code. So, you know, I, I would make that connection that you have practiced so much so, you have lived it so much so, you be it, you are it, you purpose to be it, that in the moment you needed to be it, like um, really well, you just your body, your your you, you knew what to do. Something kicked in, and that's because you're rewriting your genetics every time you know you solidify this these paradigms. So it goes that it goes that deep, guys. It sinks into our energy. It sinks into our cells, and so the come from is really important. If we're telling ourselves disempowering stories about ourselves and about others. Well, that sinks into our DNA, too, and that's the story we're telling ourselves, and that's the instructions we're giving the body, and then that's, you know, the results we're going to see. So the come from is very important. I agree with you on that. Anything anything you could say about that? And do you feel like it's just such a part of you now because you you purpose to be it and live it? Yeah, I mean, it's... It's it's something I'm genuinely passionate about. Passionate about people. I I love this government and I love this game they have placed before us. This is the greatest game in the world, on the planet, in the universe. 
you ain't on this planet for very long. So you might as well play the game and learn the rules because there are rules. And if you don't want to play by the rules, well, uh, that's kind of a, a throw up in the air, you know. What's going to happen is going to happen. If you don't want to play by their rules and you don't want to ab- abide by any rules, well, then you got to get tossed past the game. But it's uh, the come from and and practice and everything. And, and people, you a lot of people say, they, well, you know, I've been programmed. I can't get it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just not getting it. Well, that's interpretation. How much time have you really, really spent towards it? And do you really want to learn it? Or are you just kind of sloughing it off? Hmm. Um, you know, Brandon would be a great, person to study under for people who are just delving into this. He is he is very into the spiritual end of this. Mm-hmm. If you want to learn how to execute something, come to Gordon Hall. If you want to learn the judicial side of things, go to Jack. That guy is so that guy is freaking bright. He's been in this game for a very, 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 very long time. And he's uh he's an engineer and I'm telling y'all, you're going to have to listen to him a few times before you understand his language. Because he is an interesting character. But that when those three guys get together, it's like magic in the air. Yeah. Because they're, you know, they're, they're, they're our three branches of government. So we got Jack, the judicial side, Gordon, the executive side, and, and Brandon, the legislative side. Brandon has put some beautiful documents together, some of the, actually, the best documents I've ever seen. That guy is just way out there with them. And on, because of, I tell people, these documents are baked with love, just like cooking. Any mom will know that she puts love into her cooking. And you can, t- you can taste the difference between a home meal and a restaurant meal. You can't beat home cooking. That's my opinion on things. You have to bake these documents. You have to bake your spirit with love. I like that. What the fuck? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's this is getting into other things, but it's... No, so no, anyway, it's, it's, it's all connected. You know, it really yeah. is. That's more of the come from, like loving yeah. ourselves, loving what we're doing. There was a couple of points since that, you know, that first arrest and, and going through my process and, and my administrative process and writing things and... And there were times where I found I wanted to be argumentative with them, you know. Not only now have I kind of made um, a little bit of a change in my own attitude of my own come from, but I tell you that the debtor mentality kick, you know, kicks up. <laughs> and so I, I understand what people are saying when it's tough because because of the programming, but it still is a choice, you know. Really, people, yeah. it's like. It's still it's still a choice then. Once you know it's your programming, then you're not obviously not ignorant to that anymore. So what are you going to do now? Are you going to still be a victim to the programming or snap out of it and start deciding what you want to do? And so that's kind of it took me a little bit to get there. But I laugh now because I, you know, there were times I wanted to argue with them. <laughs> and but this just gets me into trouble. So it really doesn't pay. It's it's really great to um to see the success that people are having. It's very inspirational because it's very real. Um, it's just I feel it's part of our evolution as a species. People are waking up, you know, not only to the things happening in the world, but waking up to really themselves and what's going on with them. And I think this whole game of commerce has huge spiritual implications because it's it, it, everything's like a mirror of us, right? I know Brandon says this that if there's dysfunction on the outside, you know, that's that's a that's a result of the dysfunction on the inside. So, looking at our dysfunction, not looking to be, you know, like bad, you're bad because you're dysfunction. It's not about judging ourselves, just get it that, you know, we have dysfunctions and and let's move beyond them and let's break up those you know, paradigms that don't serve us anymore. So, um, I have three minutes left of the show. I would like you, Benson, to uh, share with people where they can learn about some of what you've been talking about, uh, some of the seminars or 
audios or videos of Brandon and, and Jack Smith and Gordon Hall, where can people find that stuff? Well, to make it simpler, why don't you all get in contact with me? You can call me at phone number 480-319-1552 or contact me at email Benton, B-E-N-T-O-N, period, private, P-R-I-V-A-T-E, at gmail.com. And we'll give you all, you know, I'll try, I'm fairly uh, good at returning phone calls and, and uh, returning emails. Um, questions, I'm open to them as well. And you can go on to TalkShoe.com uh, and you can listen to Gordon Hall's previous Monday night. And you go to TalkShoe.com, you type in uh, 91191 or Gordon Hall lowercase, and you hit contracts in motion, and then you have all all of our previous Monday nights. You can go into those, and uh, two weeks ago is when I had my, I delved into when I had my FBI meeting. Um, again, you can contact me at phone number 480-319-1552 or email Benton, period, private, at gmail.com. If you want to sign up for the seminar, you want to get some info. If you need, if you need a few examples of documents, how to put something together, we give it all out for free. So don't be afraid to ask. Sometimes I, I can be remiss. So if you don't hear from me, give me a call. Give me, shoot me another email. Okay. I, I do run and gun, so. I, well, thank you I for like making to, yourself so available. You know, that's that's really great. I, this is a, a a journey where support is definitely needed. It really helps to have people to talk to or bounce something off of or ask a question or yeah. You know, I, I certainly felt lucky when I found uh people that that ended up assisting me, you know, and still do, just through their own experiences. So it's wonderful to have that. Thank you for making yourself accessible like that. And thank you for being with me tonight on the show. I would love to do it again where we have a full, like, hour, hour and a half, you know, because we got screwed up with the time and we actually got yeah. cut short. We only had, like, maybe 40 minutes together. So would you like to do this again sometime? Of course I would, Siobhan. It would be my right. pleasure. I love giving the people some good examples of how perfect this government really is because they'll <laughs> give you everything you want. Trust me, people, I've seen it. Well, we need well, we need you because uh, we we need more um, inspiration like that because things seem scary sometimes. But there are other views, other ways we can look at this. So I got a couple of seconds left. Thank you everybody for joining me. I love you guys. You're amazing and powerful, and I can't wait to be with you again next time. Good night.